Okay, so I'm Tyler, and I'm looking at the potential of Radis norvagicus on Santa Rosa Island. Um, so what I'm looking at is to see if these Norwegian rats, the common name, are currently on Santa Rosa Island, and if so, what biosecurity methods do we have to implement to get them back off the island? So the reason I'm looking at this is because uh, around the turn of the millennium, uh, Anacapa Island was infested with these rats, and they were destroying the native seabird populations, including a bird that's vulnerable to extinction called the Scripps murrelet. So uh, 2001, 2002, they had this big plan to eradicate the rats, which worked, but it was cool because they had the native deer mice and other seabirds that they had to not kill, but still get the rats. So it was a very intensive process that worked. And um, in 2011, Santa Cruz Island employed their own biosecurity plan because uh, they thought they might have rats as well. Uh, luckily, nothing has been det detected so far, but we're taking their plan and putting on Santa Rosa so it's kind of more of the four northern islands can work together. So I set up five reconnex motion sensor cameras around the island, four in the cultural center and one out in Lovell Canyon. So these cameras uh, both need infrared heat and motion to trigger. Um, yeah, so that's going great. Uh, we believe since we are all in the cultural center, that's where the food will be, so the rats will kind of congregate there if they are on the island. So results so far, this camera's in Lovell Canyon. We found a lot of foxes. Um, luckily, no uh, non-native rats have been detected. Um, this uh, yeah, that's Lobo, Camp, Lobo Canyon. Uh, that particular fox pulled a bungee cord in front of my camera, so I have about 600 pictures like that. But luckily, it's difficult to see, but I didn't catch a deer mouse. So we know the populations out there are still doing great. Uh, this is in Night Ever Canyon, which is right behind the bunkhouse. We caught the tail end, literally, of a spotted skunk. And this is just a really great picture of a fox out in Lobo Canyon. So these cameras haven't been checked recently due to log logistical problems. Um, but I'll be heading out there in about a month, and I'll be look forward to about the 10,000 photos I'll have to go through, <laughs> hopefully not finding rats. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bryce Pritchard, and my capstone is on the current weather patterns and isolated demographics of the Bishop Pine population and how that dictates survivorship on Santa Rosa specifically. So basically, my hypothesis is that because of these three factors, isolation, fog, and its location as an island itself, that the groves and trees themselves will continue to thrive and expand. Uh, so basically this project is broken up into two different parts. The census, which my partner Zach and I did, and a tree coring portion, which is going to be done by myself. Uh, for the census, we used GPS technology, specifically the Garmin Oregon 650, and we went to each and every tree and took waypoints to mark specifically where they are and threw that all into our map. Uh, and then with each point, we took several different attributes, ranging from height, health, and reproductive uh, reproductivity. Uh, and then for tree coring, I'm using a three-quarter inch boring tool, and using ArcMap along with the census, I selected 30 random trees uh, within the entire island population, and I'm going uh, coring them. And then I have to clean the borer between each use, stain the core itself and then use the rings to compare to weather data to see how they're growing in various weather patterns and conditions. So in droughts, are they growing less? In rain years, are they growing more? Um, so with results, one of the things I was able to find was that based on DBH, I was able to find exactly how old. Uh, so using the DBH and age, I can see the rings and how they relate to each other. So the inner ring, so any trees that are between, uh, bless you, 3.4 centimeters to 6.8 centimeters range between 20 years old and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's it. How's it going, everyone? I'm Robert Ruzica. Um, I'm currently doing my study on the effects of vegetation in El Nino on geomorphology of Long Great Canyon Creek. Um, so far, however, this year, we haven't seen much of, I mean, it's supposed to be in El Nino. We've seen larger rainfall, but we haven't seen drastic increases. So El Nino is getting thrown away a little bit. Um, overall, stream geomorphology can be uh, altered by tons and tons of factors. But the two that I've chosen are vegetation and uh, flow, so essentially stream velocity, which will then be calculated later in my results. Um, these two factors alone can determine essentially everything that has to do with the stream. So the type of stream, how much sedimentation is in what spot, where the erosion is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
So right now I am doing my, pre uh, my study on Long Grade Canyon Creek, which is right there um, off of View Glen, or you drive over it uh, to get out of here. And every time there is a storm event of larger than 0.15 inches, <coughs> I have to go out Sorry. and do 10 <coughs> transects well, of, um, of Long Grade Creek, both vegetation transects and topographical transects. So topographical transects basically go in with an automatic level and a surveyor's rod and um, manually take the data down uh, with the automatic level looking across to the surveyor's rod, which is then planted by another person into the ground and write the number down. Um, for the vegetation transects or band transects, I essentially just write down every, um, every two meters and two meters across I write down the percent cover of vegetation within that area. Um, so far, the largest visible change, or the only real visible change that I've seen so far, is within the thaw line, which is um, essentially the, the deepest part of the stream where you can notice, uh, see a noticeable carve within the stream channel. Um, this thaw lag change is ex drastically uh, larger within the restoration area, which is down here near the pedestrian bridge. You can see the actual stream is beginning to braid, whereas in Kelsey Arisman's study last year, you could not even see a thaw lag. Um, and other than that, there hasn't really been a large enough storm event to make drastic changes within one event. Overall, I haven't done any looking at the um, range of increase from the beginning to the end, and I have to go back and still get some of that done, and that's my Hey, I'm Kevin Schmidt. I'm uh, doing research on Sandy Beach ecology, uh, studying the effects of anthropogenic stress and physical stress on uh, invertebrate communities on Sandy Beach. <clears throat> so I, I, I hypothesize that uh, beaches undergoing significant physical and anthropogenic stress would have lower species heterogeneity, evenness, and species richness. All right. So methods. Here's, uh, here's some Sandy Beach crews right here working out at Goleta, uh, Goleta County Park. Um, I analyzed 85 sand cores at each beach uh, for invertebrate life. Uh, I counted and identified each uh, invertebrate found. A rapid beach assessment in which uh, you quantify the amount of physical and uh, anthropogenic stress on the beach environment was done at each site. Uh, we collected uh, data from about 31 sites over the summertime. I then repeated this uh, analysis at 12 sites in the fall and the winter. <clears throat> All right, got some preliminary results right here. So uh, I know my error bars over here in the in the room categories are quite large, but my p-value is finds that there's a significant significant difference between uh, emerita population density. You can see right here, uh, in a non-groomed beach and in a groomed beach, that is much lower. <clears throat> and I also found that, uh, so this winter and this late fall, we had some huge swells that tore apart the beaches. Uh, I found that the shift in time also had, and most likely with the storms, had a large impact on species richness. Uh, pretty good p-value right there. Okay. Thank you guys very much for, for listening.